in reading Utmost, there's always this challenge to examine ourselves to find that place where we literally can deal with the reality of who we are and who we're becoming. Because the longer that you're a Christian, the more that you discover who God is and how he operates, the less you feel like a Christian and the less you think you are one. Because it seems as though the closer you get to God, the more you're aware of your own failings and really falling apart. And you feel like you're not measuring up to the full stature of what God is because you suddenly discover that he's even greater than you ever thought he was. And once you begin to experience that kind of holiness, it kind of makes you feel more like a sinner than you are. And the hard part is, is that when you look at heaven and you live on earth, you also begin to see as you're looking towards your home that you one day will be a part of, you look around you and you see just how bad the world is becoming, how deteriorating things are happening to society and to those people around you that suddenly you feel as though, wow, things are really getting bad and they're getting worse and, you know, what's going to happen and how do I live in this world and how do I exist and what am I going to do? Well, that's a good thing. <laughs> because, you see, if you weren't thinking of those things, if you didn't feel like that, there's a problem. You're part of the world. You're too comfortable where you're at. You're too part of what's really going down the tubes. You see, as darkness gets worse, we should be shining as lights. And as it gets worse, it should be more obvious the direction we go, not with the world, but away from the world. So, on the one hand, there's this kind of like conflict because we look at ourselves and we recognize our own sinfulness, but at the same time, we look at the world and we see just how bad it's becoming. God wants us to always deal with our own sin first, but then he also recognizes that because we live in the world and we're not of the world, we're going to sometimes despair from the feelings that the world will convey upon us because when we look at the way that they're living and the way that the world exists and how much they get caught up into the things of the world, it really is pretty disgusting and it's pretty sad because that's really not who you and I are. It's not at all who we're becoming. Moral divinity. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. The challenges we face is to not live our lives for ourselves. The challenges we face is to live our lives like Jesus did, to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, which is easy because that's religious, and any religious person can do it, and religion teaches us that, but to also lay down our life for the sake of the gospel, that we would pledge our head to heaven, so to, so to speak, for the gospel's sake, or that we would care enough about the world to love them enough that we would see that they really need Jesus and that if we have that God inside us changing us then we have all we need. What we need to do is to help someone else to get God so that God would be working on them and in them to accomplish his purposes so that he would be making them into a fit person for heaven. Because you see you can't just walk into heaven the way you are. You'll perish. It'll be too bright. The lights will be too bright. The righteousness too right. The love too loving. The peace too peaceful. The joy too joyful. It'll just explode yourselves. They'll be annihilated because you're in the presence of completeness, perfection, all that encompasses that we are not. And so we have to have a new nature. and We have to be changed into that spiritual body that we're going to inhabit. Or God has to do something like he did with John and had him eat a scroll, you know. That took care of some of it for a temporary time, you know, for John to be there. But living in the world, you know, is kind of, kind of like affects us, you know. You begin to realize that you need to sometimes get yourself washed up to get the stain and the sin of what you had to deal with at work or what you had to deal with at home or what you had to deal with in the world, you know, off of you. You had to kind of like purify your mind because all the garbage that's on television and videos and even sometimes, you know, in church, you know, you just gotta go, yes, and have a detox, you know, and get baptized or something or cleansed, you know, and just kind of flush it all away. And that's kind of what 
Jesus meant when he said, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. Because literally we should be dying to the world and living unto God. We should be less involved with or wanting to be a part of this world system and more discerning of looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, because he's the one who is able to pass through all this corruption, all this filth, all this dirt, all this garbage, and yet remain without sin. So when we talk to him, when we share with him our heart, he understands where we're coming from. He knows how we feel, and so he'll comfort us in that. But we still seek to walk in a way that's better each day than it was the day before. Now, obviously, we do fail, and when you stumble, you bumble, you you know, kind of drop the ball, and you got to pick it back up, and you got to go forward. And the way that we do that is just simply, we start over again. We pray, we ask God, we seek His face, we ask forgiveness, we ask for His mercy, and then we go on our way. And so in the co-resurrection, the proof that I have been through crucifixion with Jesus is that I have, I have a decided likeness to Him. The incoming of the Spirit of Jesus into me readjusts my personal life to God. I have to suddenly deal with issues that I never would have dealt before. I have to deal with my love life, my thought life, my personal life, my lusts, my sexual appetite, my desires, oh, my carnal flesh, my pride, my ego, you know. All of those things that the world says is good for you. Within reason, they say you can do all these things to a certain degree as long as you don't break their law. But unfortunately, there is God's law that is written in your heart. And that's the kind of conscience we want to have, sensitive to God's law, not really paying attention to the law of the land. Because you see, every few years or so, they change the law of the land. The law of the land changes morals into moral turpitude, you know, where it's not so bad that they change the word moral to mores. And then from mores to kind of like situational ethics. And then from ethical morality to suddenly it's kind of like, well, you know, it's kind of like cooperative ethical continuity, you know, where we agree on what we agree on and that's con contiguous to the immoral or to the moral whole. As long as all of us agree on it, then it's moral. No, that's not the way it works. One man standing up for truth is more accurate than if everyone said that it's moral to lie. Because you see, when you have a group of people that say, oh, well, we're going to believe the lie and accept it, then you have what? You have darkness and calling it light. You have the world in its ways. And yet, we're light. We can't deny the nature that's in us. God is changing us. God has made us into His image. And we are becoming more like that, even as the world gets darker and it gets worse. You need to think about that when you are approaching social behaviors or you're doing things in your personal life. Are you becoming better like Jesus or are you becoming more like the world in its ways? Are you cussing and swearing and cursing and using all kinds of vulgarities and not even caring that you know, you're hurting people and destroying them and wiping them out? Or are you looking at the responsibility of who you are as a representative of God himself and of Jesus his son and of the kingdom of heaven here on earth. Are you that kind of citizen or are you a citizen of the United States of America? You know, do what you want as long as we all voted that we could do it. You know, could we all agree that the law of the land is what we believe in? Sorry, you know, I can do what I want as long as it's legal. And when it isn't legal, I get a gun, you know. I don't think so. The resurrection of Jesus has given him authority to impart life of God to me, and my experimental life must be constructed on the basis of his life. I must be experiencing his life more and more in my daily life, or else I'm missing the point of why he wanted to save me in the first place. Because he should be alive in me, not me alive in him. You see how that works? Sure, we are alive in him, and we're seated in heavenly places as we are in heaven with God. But Jesus wants to live his life in us so that we would be the manifestation of God on earth. Physically, the personification of God himself, Emmanuel, inhabiting his people and accomplishing his purposes through the venue of you and me. Amazing. God would so entrust himself to his son to apportion to us 
a measure of himself by his spirit that we would be gods like so to speak or actually the better word would be we would be his sons and daughters by the spirit of adoption whereby we cry unto the father Abba and then we are his children showing forth the praises of our God revealing the nature of God exercising the truth as God has revealed it in our lives and applied it to the people around us we are God's representatives we are those that God has given a certain amount of responsibility and accountability to be his children even as we are laboring with Jesus to become like that when once I decided that my old man i.e. the heredity of sin should be identified with the death of Jesus then the Holy Spirit invades me once I agree that I want to be like Jesus then God brings conviction of the things I'm doing wrong what am I not doing about my addiction to drugs what am I not doing about my addiction to porno what am I not doing about my abusive nature with my mouth or my tongue or my my fists or my hands how am I not really turning that over to God and your conscience will guide you to the place where you need to confess that sin to God and ask him to take over to be crucified to your own flesh because you're the one that's doing it you're the one that's giving in to your flesh when you have been given the freedom of your spirit to overrule that with which your passions could do with which your flesh had become addicted to you can overcome that and be an overcomer he takes charge of everything my part is to walk in the light and to obey all that he reveals when God brings something up deal with it do it don't wait accomplish it give it to him pray ask God to lead it ask God to take it ask God to remove it from you and ask God to seal it so to speak so that it would not ever have an influence over you again don't get too spiritually Pentecostal with the spirit of this and spirit of that demon this demon that because really it's you the biggest problem is you are like a, a city without a wall and every time the enemy comes he can walk right in because there's no walls there's no doors there's no windows everything's thrown wide open so you have to take care of your part first you have to allow God to begin to build a spiritual house in you that you occupy and then once you are in the light darkness can't come in because how great is the light within but if you keep putting to yourself looking at and participating in sin and getting involved in those things that you know are wrong then all you're doing is opening up the doors to that with which God has told you to close the door on when I have made the moral decision about sin it is easy to reckon actually that I am dead unto sin because I find the life of Jesus there all the time just as there is only one stamp of humanity so there is only one stamp of holiness the holiness of Jesus and it is his holiness that is gifted to me God puts the holiness of his son into me and I belong to a new order spiritually you are holy because God said be ye holy as I am holy but that holiness comes from the very nature of God that is in you because it's no longer you that liveth but Christ that liveth in you and the life that you now live in the flesh you live by the will of the Son of God who died for you and gave himself for you so that you would be the holiness of God manifested in the impurity of your flesh revealed through the spiritual life that you have within that's coming out through the demonstration of love and mercy and grace that you do with your actions with your attitude and with the way that you walk and talk and live out this life that God has given you that's why it is the utmost because it takes everything from us it causes us to be crucified with Christ it causes us to be resurrected again unto new life it causes us to seek to always do the right thing at the right time in the right way because we ask God to lead us each and every day of our life because we desire with all of our heart with all of our soul with all of our mind with our passion and we want more of that than we want life itself because even as David cried that out we likewise when we seek to do that with our uttermost God meets us with his utmost and he will accomplish his purpose in us when we cry out to him for that with which he can give us, Jesus, alive and well and living in us.